hi welcome back to the channel today's video is all about setting up your business um self-employed or limited company there are benefits to each and there are also drawbacks to each hi i'm sarah i'm a qualified accountant currently working in practice in the uk and i'm here to help you on your business journey help you with your your tax stuff setting up your business and um, some motivational stuff any anything to do with setting up your business and running your business basically so anyway let's get straight into the video self-employed or limited company what's best for you watch this first so i want to start off firstly talking about being self-employed or setting up as a sole trader they're both the same thing um let's just get straight into it so the benefits in in my opinion, of being self-employed or a sole trader are the simplified tax. Sole traders report their business income and expenses on their personal tax return, which is called the self-assessment in the UK. There's no need to file separate business tax returns or navigate complex corporate tax rules. You also have the flexibility and control to choose your hours and take your holidays when you want and set your own rates. You have immediate access to profits, unlike in some corporate setups where profits need to be distributed among shareholders or reinvested in the business as a self-employed individual, you are entitled to the entirety of your business profits. However, there are drawbacks to being self-employed or a sole trader, as it's otherwise known, and these are the personal liability risks. I personally am not comfortable putting my personal guarantee on a business um, when it could have been put into a limited company. And I'm going to talk about the limited company benefits later. Um, but the personal liability risks for you, the individual, the sole trader, are you are 100% responsible for any debt incurred by the business. This can quickly become a sticky situation as many of our clients have learned the hard way during COVID and the aftermath of COVID. And there's also the, the higher tax li liability for sole traders, the tax rules are different. You'll pay income tax on the profits of your business, regardless of whether or not you have extracted those profits for personal use or invested them in the business. In addition to paying income tax on the business profits, sole traders, self, being self-employed, must also pay class two national insurance contributions. That's £3.25 a week in the 2324 tax year. If the lower profits threshold of 12,570 per year is exceeded. And class four contributions, that's 9% on profits of the business between 12, 12 and a half thousand and 50,000 in the 2023, 2024 tax year, and 2% on profits over the 50 grand threshold. Um, So it can, get, it can get quite expensive if you're planning on going big. And when I say big, I mean over the 50 grand mark. There's other drawbacks like limited scalability, which is what I found early on in my career setting up my company. Um, I quickly changed from self-employed to limited company because we were government contracting, public sector contracting, and you're just not taken seriously if you're just self-employed. A limited company is more credible. So self-employed self individuals typically have limited financial resources to invest in the business and less credibility. So that was the benefits and drawbacks of self-employment or sole trader. Next, I'm going to talk about the benefits of forming a limited company. Um, this is uh, where I get excited when I'm talking to clients because if they say, oh, I'm just going to be self-employed and see how it goes, I get quite deflated because I love to see people with the go big or go home attitude. Like, what's the point in working for yourself if you're not going to go big, if you're not going to expand and outsource and really create a passive income like something that's going to give you the lifestyle that that you deserve so this is where i say to clients like are you going to go big or are you going to go home basically um so the benefits of forming a limited company are the limited liability protection one of the most significant advantages is limited liability which means your personal assets are generally protected from business debts and legal liabilities. Another benefit is the tax efficiency. Limited companies often in, often enjoy more favourable tax treatment with the ability to split income between salary, 
and dividends, potentially reducing your overall tax liability. There's also another way using pensions, which I'm going to leave for another video. As I said about self-employment, self you have less credibility, but having a limited after your business name can enhance your credibility and professionalism in the eyes of clients and partners. And this is especially helpful when you're public sector contracting. There's also growth opportunities. Limited companies can more easily attract investment, secure loans and scale their operations. If you look at a contract in the public se sector, limited companies are looked upon more fav favorably than a sole trader set up. So the numbers and the taxes for limited companies are a little bit more complex. Director salaries are the most common form of rem rem I can never say this word. remuneration. If you are a business owner, if a company pays salaries, it will operate via the PAYE scheme and report to HMRC through real-time information. This is one of my jobs at um, the practice I work at. I do the weekly, fortnightly and monthly pay runs. I take care of all of the PAYE, um, national insurance contributions, pension contributions. I look after all of that. I send all the figures to the business owners and they pay accordingly. For a business owner operating via a limited company, it's worthwhile considering drawing down a small salary as part of your overall remuneration package. A salary of at least 6,396, which is the lower earnings limit for the 2324 tax year, will mean that you will still be making eligible national insurance contributions towards your state pension. The lower earnings limit, the 6,396, just means that if you or in and above this amount, you will still receive national national insurance credits. That protects your state pension, even if you're no longer liable to pay national insurance contributions. A salary of up to 12 and a half grand, 12,570, assuming that there is no other income except dividends. So this means that you haven't got another job. They'll be covered by your personal allowance and should be free of income tax. No employees national insurance is payable either. Salaries are a deductible business expense for the company, so will, will reduce the amount of corporation tax the limited company will need to pay. The taxation of salaries for 2324 tax year are as follows. The personal allowance is £12,570. Salaries up to this threshold, assuming no other income, do not incur tax. Between 12,570 and 50,270, a tax rate of 20% applies. Between 50,270 and 125,140, a tax rate of 40% applies. And anything over that, a tax rate of 45% applies. In the 2023-2024 tax year, employees are required to pay the following national insurance contributions. Class 1 contributions are 12% for, for salaries ranging between 12 and a half grand and 50 grand per year, 2% on earnings above 50 grand a year. Round it down because I'm sick of saying <laughs> 270 and 570 over and over again. In addition, employers must also pay NI contributions, 13.8% class 1 contribution on salaries above 9,100 per year. Did you know employee and employee NICs are never due on dividends, but always on salaries? If a limited company has made a profit after paying corporation tax, this can be distributed to the shareholders of the company in the form of dividend payments. Recipients of dividend payments will need to pay tax on their dividends. Depending on the amount of dividend income, you may be eligible for the tax-free dividend allowance. For the 2023-2024 tax year, the tax-free dividend allowance is £1,000. This means that you won't have to pay any tax on the first £1,000 of dividend income each tax year. So now I'm going to talk about the tax on your dividends income and combining that with a salary to make this the most tax efficient way to run your company. If you receive over a thousand pound in dividend income, the tax implications are as follows. The personal allowance for the 2023-2024 tax year is 12,570, as I've mentioned many times before. If your total salary and dividend income for the year falls within this amount, no income tax will be due on them. 
By combining your personal and dividend allowance, you can receive up to 13,570 income free of income tax in this tax year. If your combined salary and dividend income exceeds 13 and a half grand in this tax year, you'll need to pay tax. If you receive dividends up to the value of 50 grand, a tax rate of 8.75% applies after you have used up your personal allowance and the thousand pound dividend allowance. For dividends over and under 125 grand, a tax rate of 33.75% applies. Over 125 grand, it jumps to 39.35%. And as I've said, there are ways to get your income to under the 125 grand using pension contributions, which I'm going to talk about in another video. From the 6th of April 2024, individuals who receive dividend income, the allowance will be cut to £500. Thank you, Chancellor of the Exchequer. So as you can see, you're taxed on all of your income, regardless if that's invested back into the business or not, if you're self-employed. But there are tax savings to be made if you're going to form a limited company. And I, I always say, if you're going to go big, just do the limited company from the start. It makes everything so much easier. However, I know there are lots of risk-averse accountants out there, my colleagues included, who will say, just go the self-employed route and see how it goes. Because a lot of businesses fail in the first year. We all know that. We've, we've seen loads of videos on the percentages. Um, however, if you're clear on your mindset and you are determined that this is going to be a success, you're not going to fail, you've got too much rain on it, then yes, go the limited company route. That's what I would do. However, there are a few drawbacks to forming a limited company. Um, they sound worse than they are. But a good accountant can help you with all of this and a good accountant can put you in touch with people who can help um, outsource as much of the administrative tasks as you can and you should be on to a winner. So running a limited company has more administrative complexity. It involves more paperwork, legal obligations and compliance requirements such as annual financial statements and corporation tax returns, all of which a good accountant can help you with. There are costs, setting up and maintaining a limited company can be more expensive due to the registration fees, accountant costs and potentially higher insurance premiums. And this, this, this next one, reduced privacy, limited companies must disclose financial information, including director salaries and annual accounts, which becomes public, publicly accessible. And also if you're not using a different address to your home address or, or whatever, your home address is going to be made available on Companies House, but there are ways around that, which I'm also going to talk about in another video. So in summary, choosing between self-employment and a limited company depends on factors like your financial situation, your risk tolerance, growth aspirations and administrative capacity. Many businesses start as self-employed individuals like I did and transition to a limited company as they grow. It's advisable to consult with an accountant or a business consultant to make an informed decision based on your specific circumstances. Tax efficient business plan. As I've said, a limited company can be tax efficient if the circumstances are right, but all methods may not be suited to all businesses. The tax benefit to a company is not the rates of tax at which salary and dividends are charged, but the fact that as a company owner, it is possible to control when funds are extracted from the business and control the timing of the tax. You may also be able to extract these funds to other family members who may be involved with the company. In the right circumstances, with a combination of salary, dividends and pension contributions, together with distributing wealth around family, a limited company can help you achieve a highly tax efficient business. So if you would like any information, my um, email address is in my about section and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, but that is it for now. Thanks for watching.